Welcome, Collider fans, to the Collider Walking Dead review show. For this week, we are breaking down episode three, season seven, called The Cell. Well, no, there's no Vincent D'Onofrio, there's no Jennifer Lopez in this one, but so much happened here with Daryl and Dwight. We had some more time with Negan, we got inside the sanctuary, there's apparently a fence outside where, with walkers attached to them that people go and bang, hang buckets on top of. It's <laughs> A lot of stuff was happening, so uh, let's break it on down here. We're going to talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, and then maybe ask some ideas what might be happening in the future as we go forward with the season. But first, let's meet everybody here at the desk to my left. Hey guys, it's Dennis here. I'm back. I'm not a regular member i'm filling in for josh i was here on the the first episode and back for this one it's good to be with you guys easy street we all got that song stuck in our head right i guess it's by some uh, little unknown band called the collapsible hearts club Ooh, but it's name. like one of those songs that you hear and you think that you already know it because yeah it's kind of catchy but they kind of get stuck in your head and then they play it over and over and then you get sick of it right i'm sure there's some music musician out there who listens. oh yeah they're using the same time that yes. gets in your head like a, some kind of earworm and to my right I am Negan. No, no, I'm not. I'm actually hungry, though. What? Not because of the dog food oh. sandwich. He made dog a pretty food. damn good looking sandwich. His at the egg beginning sandwich? Of this. I kind of yeah. want an egg sandwich. Yeah. Now. He worked hard for that egg sandwich. He did a lot of yes. stuff just to be able to get the. Well, a lot of other sandwich. people worked a lot well, hard sure, for, for his egg sandwich. <laughs> but this was an interesting episode because a lot happened, yet not a lot of action happened. Yeah. And I thought this was uh, one of these episodes that we've been, we've been kind of getting this season that are kind of these short story episodes to flesh out what's happening on all these different areas. Areas and so because we imagine it's all going to come together in some kind of uh, a big episode, and especially next week where we have a 90 minute episode, we'll see how that ties in uh, with the kingdom and uh, uh, the, the, them up on the hill and also the sanctuary going on with Negan. Uh, Dennis, what did you like? And you guys know we're going to talk about what we like, what we didn't like, and then it goes. So, Dennis, what did, what did you like about so, this? So, this episode was much like last week's episode, which was kind of a break from all, all that happened in the season premiere. And yeah. I like this episode because it was very character driven. I mean, I if anyone's watched me talk about about The Walking Dead, I have, you know, I, I and sometimes I think it's it can be some of the best television mm -hmm. that we can see, and sometimes I feel like they're stalling, they're milk and stuff. But this episode, there's purpose behind it being slower, is because it's a character driven episode yeah. all about Dwight. Not really, I mean, Daryl is the parallel to Dwight, but it's really about Dwight and where what his backstory is and yeah. how his relationship with Negan is. It, it's a messed up relationship yeah. with how his wife is now Negan's wife and, and, and all that stuff. So I, I, I enjoy this episode. Yeah, and there's so much here because of the, the dynamic. It's essentially a love triangle that was really a, a love quadrangle that became a love triangle only because, when, and we saw this last season, that the, the, uh, her sister, Sherry's sister, who is Dwight's wife, died in the fire. So what are the ramifications of that? They escaped. They, got, they had to come back and beg uh, Negan to take them back. Negan did. Sherry offered herself and then Negan took the iron to Dwight's face, which is insane. That's a price you pay just to live. But what kind of life is that? It seems like, you know, it seems like, like you said uh, correctly, Dennis, this whole episode seemed to be more about Dwight than Daryl. And so what, what does that mean? Like, what, what's that going to lead to as we go down the, the path? Perry, what'd you think? What'd you like I, about this? I found that it was probably equally about Dwight and Daryl. I get, I totally get where you're coming from, though. It's because Dwight, we didn't really know his backstory. Yeah. And this, this episode makes me want to go back to that previous episode when we had him with Sherry and Tina taking Daryl's stuff mm. because now you can go back and watch that episode and get a completely different experience out of it. So that's a really cool thing here. Yeah. But I think The Walking Dead is doing a pretty damn incredible job so far of making purely character-driven episodes because you could say it about the first episode between yeah. Negan and Rick, him breaking him down, the, the dog thing, dragging him around like a dog, now yeah. making Daryl eat the dog food. And then even with the last episode, it was very much a character-driven episode yeah. for both Ezekiel and Carol. So I think they're getting off to a pretty good start here and doing things where it's it's establishing building blocks that mm -hmm. they're going to be able to utilize for the rest of the season. When we thought that the first, and, and it did, it started off with a bang, but that first episode could easily have eclipsed the entire season, yeah. but I think they're setting themselves up to do some really incredible things throughout now. Yeah, one of the best things, Walking Dead is always the best, I think, in those scenes, in those episodes that have character-driven stuff to them as the main point, because that is what allows us to see what this world is like. Even with zombies uh, knocking at the door, we're still human beings. We still have to deal with human being stuff, our own issues, our own foibles, and things like that happen. And then you see what Walking Dead did, did really great tonight. Once again, they took a character that you accepted as being like an evil 
evil guy, not yeah. a good person, and they let you go on the journey with him and understand why he's doing the things he's doing. So much so that Daryl gives a stamp of approval on him at the end when he says, I understand why you did it. It's because you had someone else. Yeah. I don't. That's why I can't. Which is a bit short-sighted. I thought that was a bit short-sighted by Daryl because... All these other people, like his movement or his punching caused Glenn to die. Yeah. So who knows what not converting to Negan will do to anyone else, right? And Dwight reminds him of yeah. that fact as well. Uh, the Polaroid shot, was that the blood spat? That's Glenn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Of, of Glenn or was it the both of them? Oh, I can't maybe remember. the both of them. I, I don't. Uh, but off of what Perry was saying uh, in terms of the premiere setting up this season, I think it was great because whether... You know, with, with Negan and what he did to Glenn and Abraham, yeah. that sets it up so like an episode like this where Negan confronts Dwight or Daryl, yeah. you get or actually Dwight and Daryl, yeah. you get that intimidation factor. You know that like, OK, this isn't like he's playing around. He could really kill him. He could yeah. bash his head in because he's already done it to two established characters. Yeah. So all that tension. You know, if this was like the first time we ever seen Negan, we don't know if the bravado that he has, all the swagger is, is true or not. But now we've already established, no, he will do that. Yeah. It really is the sign of an incredible villain because that part where they were all out in the yard yeah. and I, f oh, I forget what the line was now, but he said something to uh, he said something to Daryl. He was like talking about whether or not Lucille was thirsty or, oh, yeah. or he he's not thirsty, but Lucille might be. And I'm like, yeah. no way. He's he's going to do something terrible to Daryl. I right. was kind of sure of it. And the second he he says a line like that it makes the wheels in my head start turning and that happened so many times throughout this episode yeah. when i'm i'm sure he's going to have had enough at this point i'm sure he's going to even do something bad to dwight at this point yeah. that is the sign of a spectacular villain that is going to increase the suspense level of this season through the roof going forward but yeah and because he's so relaxed with his body language as an actor like you say jeffrey dean he's just kind of laying back yeah. hmm. you know he's not coming forward at you most of the time he's just kind of laying back with that bat you know and if you've ever held a bat like we have lucilia <laughs> Like you, you have it. Just it affects you how you stand, how you move. So it's it's interesting the way he's playing. It's very it's very fluid. It's very languid. Like he, at any moment he can snap like a rubber band, and then you're you're done for. You know. And in that moment when he swung the bat and almost hit Daryl, I had a reaction because I was watching going, oh no! I think and, everyone and, had a reaction. Yeah, yeah, Daryl. Sure. And then except Daryl, which shows you the kind of uh, obstinate place he's in. But this is Daryl's character, right? People forget sometimes Daryl was not in the comics. Like he was not written, uh, in, or he died quickly in the comics. I think if I remember correctly. But he was not a big part of the comic. So they're playing on borrowed time with Daryl. So they're playing this character and using it for what it is in the in the show. It's interesting to see now what his obstinance will do for Negan. How does that change Negan? How is that going to affect Negan? Because he's essentially saying, I want to have Daryl replace Dwight. He was almost yeah. saying that in that scene at the end. Yeah, he wants him to be either replace him or be another Dwight. And, yeah. you know, it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan's he's, his delivery of, of the lines yeah. that, like, comes across cross that that's why we buy it like he's like oh me and Dwight we're totally cool now you know it's like these things where th there's hidden meaning behind what he's saying he's yeah. like saying these things you know in a light-hearted manner but really he's he's saying look I'm the boss of you right you better watch out right and he has all those people like kowtow to him like the, the whole kneeling thing yeah. is so weird to me but does he yeah not oh, not only do we see Dwight you know, I yeah. wouldn't say having second thoughts, but you can see that he's conflicted even having gone through what he went through. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other guy who, it's sad because I think that guy deserves a name because that was a really intense scene be between oh. uh, him and Dwight. Yeah. So I just wonder if we're going to hit the point where we start to see enough people crack where that man's words could actually come true, where it's like, this is only one guy we're up against. Mm -hmm. Why can't we all just rise up and put him down? However... Then he, I, I believe it's, uh, I wish I wrote down more of this dialogue. Mm -hmm. I believe it's, uh, it's Dwight who says that Negan want, Negan's the one who, who put them together and mm -hmm. made them live, li live like a, a happy life or wherever they're at yeah. now. So it's like at the same time when you can, you can look at it and say, oh, Negan's a terrible guy who has an evil bat that he smashes people's heads in with. At the same time, he's also taking care of these people to an extent. However, we have not seen the rest of the compound. So right. God knows what he's really doing. But there is kind of, you know, a push and pull, mm -hmm. a give and take to the situation where I'm curious to see what led more of those people to follow Negan. Well, yeah. also with, with Dwight killing that guy, yeah. that shows that that was a mercy killing because yeah. he did not want to go back. He didn't want to live that life anymore. He'd rather die. And, you know, 
for Negan's sake, Negan wants that guy to come back and be a productive member and earn his points. Right. So him killing him, that's a sign of, of Dwight, like kind of going against what Negan says. Yeah, we didn't see them discuss that, right? We didn't see it at any point say, like, why'd you bring him back shot in the back? Why'd yeah. you bring him back so you couldn't, you know, go get stuff for me? We didn't hear him say that. But to Perry, your point, I think it, it's, uh, we can remember what Ezekiel said last episode, which is people need someone to follow. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the thing. Whoever shows that strength, people need yeah. someone to follow. The and line here was, we were losing, now we're not. Yeah, and yeah. You know, oh, it's that, right. it She's, sounds like right. a simple, very short sentence, but it means just about everything yeah. in the world of The Walking Dead. Yeah, and we see that happening with him more and more as he's embracing this power and using it through, because he is in the sanctuary. It is this illusion. It is this illusion. Yes, he has people, he has power, but it's this illusion that he carries within the people that he can lead them to victory or lead them to be in charge for now. But nothing like this ever lasts forever, right? We've seen it through history. You're this evil, you will There's eventually get taken coup. down. There's yeah. always a coup. There's always a coup. Exactly. And the guy's next line kind of teases that. Then he turns to him and he says, "You." he says something along the lines of at least, you feel I remember, D. And yeah. These are all like, even though everybody is like, "Oh, I'm Negan," right. they're all people with history, and yeah. it's just a matter of time before people's feelings bubble up, yep. bubble over, and this thing that Negan created crumbles. And yeah. then there was that scene between Dwight and his wife, Sherry, yeah. or his ex-wife now, right. Sherry, in Oof. the in that stairwell, just yeah. sharing a cigarette. Just how kind of depressing that was. Basically, acknowledging that, hey, we did this. Right. We agreed to do this because we wanted each other to still be alive. Right. I mean, the whole pregnancy on the doctor, the table, that was like powerful in that moment. Like, well, who's, how is she pregnant with who? And the way Dwight reacted, you're like, oh, no, it's not his. And then, oh, it was just, it just those are the deals you make. But once yeah. again, right. this is what makes the show so great. They create the situation in this, uh, in this sanctuary. What's going on with them? How does that push Dwight? How does that push Negan? We know Dwight's going to push back at some point. It's just yeah. too obvious. It's and like, Daryl's going to, and Daryl's going to reawaken that within yeah. Dwight, I think. And I think the title of the episode, too, The Cell, is yeah. not just Daryl. It's, it's Dwight within this, this community and his relationship with Negan. Absolutely. Where is Daryl going to go, though, if he he doesn't yeah, break it. Yeah. Like he can't be in that cell the entire time. No, well, I mean, I think that's that, what that actually. Now that I'm saying it, that would be a pretty daring and bold move for the show if that is kind of where they left him until Rick and Co. You know, save him. change the situation and yeah. save him. I don't think they're really going to do it, but just you know, well, in where, my mind, where right, was he going to go when he yeah. escaped? When he was going to hop on that motorcycle? Where are you going to go? You can't yeah. go back to Alexandria. Well, because, now he learned that <laughs> because you go over there. It's like, well, they're part. You know, they have to feed and, and produce yeah. for for the saviors. Well, so. I don't I don't know where he was going to bust through because I imagine any con anything called the sanctuary has fences around it yeah. all around gu by, with guards. So what was he going to do? Try to ram the motorcycle into the fence? I don't know. It seems to me like that would be really difficult for him to try to do that. And you're right. Where was he going to go? Where was he going <laughs> to go? And it was a setup. Once again, what we see in Walking Dead before, like the psychological games mm -hmm. that these leaders, whether it's the governor, whether it's Ezekiel, whether it's whoever, they play these psychological games with their followers, both good and bad. And this is a psychological game he played with Daryl. He gave him a chance to understand what the situation was, and Daryl did not want to understand, and he got beat up by uh, his henchman there this in, is in why the i'm like giving them a pass for playing that psychological head yeah. game with us all between the two seasons <laughs> and, uh, and up until now because yeah. i mean really an episode like this is a perfect example of them toying with the characters and toying with the audience at the same time and oh one, they toy with the audience and, a lot yeah and, but in in this situation i think it is definitely one one is enhancing the other yeah. i was on the edge of my seat this entire yeah. episode which was a primarily quieter dialogue driven episode yeah. because of the games that they can play with me at this point and yeah. it's working well yeah i think because this episode delivers on on the character and character development then i think you you can you know buy into it yeah i i will actually argue that part of the reason i'm on the edge of my seat so much at this point and part of the reason i'm so scared of negan might be because i've had so many months to think about what he's capable of too oh yeah i think that my i'm not saying that what they did in terms of you know teasing who dies and then making us wait for x amount of months is the right thing to mm -hmm. do and they couldn't have achieved that same effect in another way but p I think part of the way, the reason I feel what I feel now about Negan, why I'm so scared of yeah. him, is because I've had so much time to to look into this character, to read up this character, and to kind of fantasize all these terrible things he could be capable of. Yeah, yeah, but that goes to where I thought the season premiere should have been the season finale last year. Because imagine if 
they ended that season it's with true. what happens to Glenn and Abraham, and you yeah. had to think about that all the way until this season. I think that's a fair point too. Yeah. 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 What, what I want to see what happens here with Dwight and Daryl because this is the relationship now we've we that we seem to have cemented. Right. Dwight is in essence a version of Daryl in that compound in yeah. that situation in the sanctuary. You know, it's almost like that Seinfeld episode where Elaine has those new friends that are all like <laughs> reminiscent of the other Seinfeld characters. You know, it's so strange when I never they confront thought we'd each be other. Comparing those two shows. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> I'm just saying. I'll just lie. But I, I really like this idea. But Negan had this line that he had: "You earn what you take." This is his mentality, right? And this is an you when you start with that mentality, that means you at any point can be overthrown. And so they seem to be laying the groundwork, like the psychological games they play with Daryl by leaving him in the chair so he can see what he could possibly have. The psychological games he plays with Dwight by making fun of his penis, making fun of what he can and can't do in bed, all, all these kinds of things. So these are all games of power that are being played in certain moments, but at any time, when the situation turns around on itself, it could really, like you were saying, Perry, implode. It's so hard to figure out how to play this game, too, because you yeah. could look at, you can compare the game that Daryl just played to the game that Rick previously played, and Rick submitted. Yeah. Rick, Rick's mind was like molded into what Negan wanted it to be. Yeah. Or at least as far as we know up until this point, whereas Daryl pushed back and mm -hmm. the entire time it's like is pushing back the right thing i know daryl wants to be Darryl not in that case not, <laughs> not in that case <laughs> yeah it's just it's interesting comparing their two fights and yeah. where they ended up in the end because it's impossible to figure out who won the game and who lost the game there, there's really no answers at this point well he uh, the thing is daryl says or dwight says it. he says negan has a has taken a shine to you mm -hmm. yeah. what is that's what we don't know we don't know what we're watching we don't know what negan's end game is with daryl what is he trying to do is he grooming daryl Look, what is it about Daryl that impresses Negan so much that he's treating him differently than he would any other captive? Well, I feel it like, seems to be that's what yeah, they're Yeah, I mean, remember, he says what he likes about Dwight is his hustle. Right. You know? Right. And maybe he see he sees some of that in Daryl yeah. about him not breaking and him want to be his own person. I mean, even at the end, he's like, I'm I'm Daryl. Like, yeah. and he still doesn't kill him mm -hmm. instead of not saying Negan. And you remember, he gives him three options. It's like, you either die, we kill you. Two, you 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 be one of those l little lackey people who like earn points, and then yeah. you but you live like crap. Yeah. Or three, which is what Negan wants from it, is yeah. you work for me. Right. I mean, everyone works for for Negan, but in like directly underneath him. Yeah. He goes out and takes care of like big important things, right. and then you can live in their world like. Like, you know, that's I think that's why they use that song, Easy Street. Yeah. You can live on Easy Street. You can have the little your own little part. He's watching what well, Dwight's watching. Who's the boss yeah. episodes? You know, on BHS, he's yeah. able to eat that egg sandwich that he's been able to take from other people. He can right. cut in line. He can he has those little perks. I mean, obviously, that's not it makes up for all the all right. the stuff he went through. But it's it's that kind of life. Yeah. I wonder if we're going to see some sort of crack in, ne in Negan's composure at some point, though, because like maybe he does this is just me you know fantasizing about what's to come but maybe he does need Daryl for a specific reason yeah because a villain can get boring and monotonous very quickly if it's the same thing over and over and there is no legit threat yeah and it certainly doesn't seem like anybody that we know on the show is going to be a threat at some point. I just wonder if there's some sort of like kink in his operation that needs to be filled or fixed. Yeah, and that's what I was kind of going to chime in on what you were talking about, Dennis, because I think he senses that he needs a stronger second. Mm. At least from us as the viewer, we haven't seen anybody step forward who can be as good as Daryl if he could tame Daryl. You know, even and people forget, like, Daryl had to be tamed by Rick. Daryl yeah. didn't want to be part of that crew. He wanted to run out after Mel, uh, Merle and, and go and do his own thing but Rick and Carol had to work on him piece by piece before he finally gave in and accepted and it took seasons for Daryl to fully be part of the crew and not be like his well, own separate thing then there was thing. the reunion between the two and it was right. almost it was so, a somewhat of a similar situation all over again where they yeah. could have lost him to, to yeah. them all yeah exactly and th those are those things that you uh, you operate with Daryl so there is possibility mm -hmm. but he seems so adamant to not change and I and this is to me what's going to be interesting to see what it leads to because is Daryl going to become this thing where the fans kind of turn on his character and be like, this guy needs to stop already because he's causing other people's death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people he, are so gonna, mad is about he turn, Is he going to turn heel, yeah. you know, for a while? <laughs> I mean, we have a kind of a parallel situation going on um, with Ezekiel and Morgan yeah. because he's he's picked Morgan out for a specific reason. Right. And remember, Morgan's like, he thought he it was because he could kill, and he said, no, I, mean, I have you here for the opposite reason. Yeah. 
So it is I, fun seeing those parallels mm. because it was like what we were saying with Ezekiel's whole mindset and how he builds his community versus Negan. It's like yes. everything is the polar opposite, and it's just so cool so far how three episodes all fe- all feel drastically different. All yeah. three have such different tones, yet they still feel like it's taking place in the same world, which is a pretty damn incredible achievement. Yeah, no, it's it's a great point, Perry. And I like that what they did with Dwight when they put him out on that road looking for that guy. He had that moment where he threatened the guy the way Negan would threaten somebody. He said, I'm going to take yeah. your family, I'm going to drag up you, I'm going to dig mm. up your wife and feed, your, feed her to yeah. the walk. I mean, what kind of lunacy is that? It's but that's Because he learned from Negan. Exactly, but he couldn't do it by shooting him in the back in that moment, which was weird because he had a... A smirk on his face. He it's had a smile. incredible how, right? even though he says all that crazy stuff, yeah. and he shot a guy in the back, I'm still on the cusp of giving him a pass, <laughs> knowing what he went through and what put him in that situation. Well, right. that and why he was shooting him in the back. I think right. that smirk was because he's like, "This is I'm doing something against Negan." Yes, like in this little moment mm-hmm. that he can't see, I'm doing something against him. So he's he's had a little smile. Yeah, you have to. Uh, that's that's what I was thinking too. He had he had the internal dialogue with himself, and that smile that came out was his way of re- his smile. His, his, he'll, t- he'll tell his small re- rebellions where he finds them, you know. Yeah. And and I you see that. And so it's and it was fun to see what is. The, 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 now we find out why. See, I thought he got burnt when the forest mm. went down, but it isn't that. It's Negan putting the iron on his face, and how, what happens to that? And so, does it? Does that achieve? What status does he have in that community? That's what I want to know. What's his status in the sanctuary? Is he one of the top dogs, yeah. like, or if not the top dog underneath? Negan, because we haven't seen anybody else. You well, know? We, we've seen a lot of people. Right. We don't know. We really don't we know met anything, anything yeah. about anyone else yeah. except for Dwight. And that's definitely something that I'm pretty eager to find out. I want to yeah. figure out what what the general consensus is yeah. in the community beyond Sherry and Dwight. How many other people are thinking about this kind of thing and yeah. thinking about whether or not Negan really is a bad person and they right. shouldn't be following him. I want to figure out the hierarchy because that's very important. And that's yeah. very important to figure out what exactly this compound is doing and how much of a threat it's going to be going forward. I mean, there there is so much <laughs> in this between all these different locations that they yeah. keep setting up because we have a we have a lot now. We have yeah. we have Negan's place. We have Ezekiel's place. Mm-hmm. We have um, the Hilltop, the Hilltop yeah. Colony. We still have Alexandria. Right. That's four significant locations mm-hmm. that, I mean... Three episodes in, we've only scratched the surface of two. Yeah. Apparently, we're back in Alexandria next week. Right. There's still so much more. I, well, I can't see, get I'm glad, of this. though, because it's one of my biggest criticisms of The Walking Dead is during the seasons, there's times where you have like maybe two or three really good episodes, and mm-hmm. then they kind of run out, or they're mm-hmm. trying to stretch things out, and they'll have an episode where nothing happens. Yeah. At least so far, I've, I've liked all three episodes, and I feel like that because of what you're saying they've had so much things set up that that they have abundance of things mm-hmm. to yeah. cover that so they won't do that stalling tactic well speaking of criticisms are there anything you guys didn't like about the show uh, this episode rather no i mean not really okay. I, fe- I felt like I, I like i said i've liked all three episodes so far i mean i had little nitpicks about the, the first episode mm-hmm. in terms of them milking it and yeah. stretching it out some of those flashback the commercial sequences breaks. Were, were unnecessary yeah. but so far this season they've delivered on action they delivered on story they delivered on character development and Mm -hmm. delivered on tension and great new characters i mean having that's how important a a good villain is having negan in there really fills a void that like where you're on the edge of your seat because you don't know what he's going to do next right well that was the that was probably one of the bigger I wouldn't say problems because I still really liked last season, but Mm -hmm. that is definitely a void that this season is filling in big time. And I think it's making a big difference in the content of the show we're getting. But I I think this episode is is pretty fantastic. I don't have any complaints whatsoever. I think it was also a beautifully shot and directed uh, episode. Mm -hmm. The just like the the coloring and the lighting and the cell. I mean, yeah. It's so important, again, when you have so many locations, to make them all feel different. And it can't just rely on the fact that, oh, it's another location. Oh, it has different production design. Just the way you shoot it and the way that they really do make you feel confined in that cell with him. The way, yeah. the way that they make it feel so much less like home than something like Alexandria, so much colder than something like the kingdom. Yeah. They really did an exceptional job with this episode and just an exceptional job with touching on things that we've seen in previous episodes, respecting the fact that Glenn is dead yeah. and his death still plays an important part in where the characters that are alive are now and how they're feeling. So, 
I mean, kudos to them for connecting all the dots mm -hmm. while, while still keeping things separate. And, and by keeping things separate, it really does show that what they're doing right now could go the distance and actually sustain the entire season. Yeah. Plus, yeah, they've done episode or seasons where there's been a separation of the characters, yeah. different areas, and sometimes they didn't work so no, well. Where right. this time, because of the different surrounding communities and situations, I think it works a lot better. Well, you sense that they're closer. Yeah. Right, that's what it is. The communities they, they feel closer. Whereas when you know, the season you're talking about, I think it was five five that they did that where yeah. they all broke off yeah. and they, I am it, it was so frustrating to wait till they came back to came back together. Yeah. I understand that season being frustrating if you had watched it from week to week. Mm. I, uh, however, binged it. <laughs> binged it, and I'm convinced that's why I really liked that season. Probably why. I, and I well, binged you, you, it but fast. you do that. You did that with Arrow too. There's I did. people I who did. like. You know, there are some criticism. things, yeah, that I think are more suitable for the binge watch yes, format. Yes. I would definitely increase, uh, mm. agree with you about Arrow being better <laughs> binged. Uh, well, we should give a shout out to the director, Rick Riley, did a great job, as you were mentioning, Perry. Angela Kang, which we've been uh, commenting how great the scenes were on this episode. She was a writer on on the episode. Uh, and also, it's it'll. I'm excited to see. I see, I don't have negatives either. I don't have any negatives. I mean, I initially thought, well, they conveniently left the door open, yeah. That's kind of, but then you realize it was all a psychological mm -hmm. game. Yeah. So it makes sense. And I like how they did that through the episode, because it makes sense. It wasn't obvious. It was like him seeing the room. We didn't know the room came into play until later when he had the scene with Negan, because he was saying to Daryl, you could have this room, right? And they purposely put him in that chair in front of the room, just to give him a glimpse. I don't have to see the whole thing, but just enough of a glimpse. And I thought that was brilliant, the way they built that up. Um, I'm excited to see, but I would have liked to have seen... My only, I think, is, is a little bit more of Sherry. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more. We, we're seeing it once again a little bit through the guy's eyes, and I think we need to see it through Sherry's eyes a little bit just to balance the scales a she little bit. She did creep up on Daryl a little, a little too easily right. in that one scene. It, what's the <laughs> truth here? What's the truth with Sherry? I, I'm just, I'm wondering, we're left with a little bit of mystery about her, and uh, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, is there anything that you guys... like? Oh, and one last thing. I want to give a shout-out to Dwight's, the scene playing the Crying, the Ray Orbison song Crying. I thought initially that was a, such an a-hole move, but in fact, it ended up working out, and mm -hmm. it kind of broke Daryl down a little bit and let him like let go of the tears that he's probably been holding on to the whole time while he's been in that cell. Yeah, all I, the I guilt that he have felt. A yeah. Before we wrap up. Yep. What is going on outside the fence with the walkers and the people? Yeah. It Good looks question. like either a training thing, seems like, or some sort of like punishment in the sense of like all right every day you got to go through this thing mm -hmm. in fear for your life i well, don't know it seems like because he keeps threatening to put your when he when dwight was threatening to put his family on the fence when they're threatening daryl to put him on the fence that seems like a training ground or a punishment for them and a training ground at the same time i think i lean towards training ground mm -hmm. and i suspect it has something to do with them training like the newbies yeah because mm -hmm. all the humans or you know the yeah. not zombies uh, in there were wearing the same sweaters mm -hmm. as, as Daryl. Yeah, yeah. And I think they might have had different letters of the alphabet yeah. on them. It looked like he was A and they were something else. Yeah, I, I saw don't know. C I, and F, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm Probably the, the grades busy. that they get from yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was making me think, you know, <laughs> uh, if yeah. Daryl is is the top of the yeah. pack and someone that Negan holds in such high regard, maybe right. that, that does mean something that he is an A. Yeah. All right. Well, what do you think going forward now? What do you think? What do you see happening here? We're going into a 90 minute episode next week. What do you, okay. uh, what do you see I happening? mean, we're, you know, we've seen previews of it. We've seen that, that, that Rick tells the Ale Alexandria mm -hmm. community that, look, man, like, yeah, I, I'm not fooling around. I'm not in charge anymore. This guy is. We're just going to do that. But, mm -hmm. you know, my speculation is similar to what I had in the first episode was somehow they're going to be able to connect with Ezekiel and his compound mm -hmm. because of Morgan and, and form some sort of alliance because it seems like with Ezekiel and his community that even though they're producing stuff, the, those pigs for, yep. for the saviors, yep. there is a little something there where they don't exactly want to go in there and try and bully uh, right, their community. Right. Like they know it's going to be a, a tough task, and this is an easier way. They get what they want without having to to risk anything. Yeah. So maybe at some point they team up with Alexandra and take on Negan. Well, it seems like Alexandra the Hilltop and uh, uh, Ezekiel Ezekiel's place. Ezekiel the running back. The Ezekiel's place. It, it'll all the kingdom will all come together. Yes. I think mm -hmm. in in against Negan, and that will re even more reinforce even more how much of a villain Negan is and how much power Negan has. That three different communities need to come together just to give him a, a fair battle. You know, what yeah. do you think well, going forward, Perry? I'm just excited, you know, in terms of the structure of the season. We had that first super dark, bloody episode. Yeah. 
Then we got the polar opposite with seeing Ezekiel and what he's running. Yeah. Now we see the exact opposite of that, seeing the operation Negan is running. Right. And then we're going to go back to Alexandria and essentially see the opposite of what Daryl's doing right now right. with Rick kind of submitting to Negan, or at least as far as we can tell right now. Yeah. So I'm just really excited about the structure of this season. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a really nice, neat, organized, meaningful way to be pairing these episodes up. Yeah. So I, good job on them. I agree. And some people have been complaining, well, who, who, why don't you play the long game with Negan? Just wait till he gets his guard down and stab him in the back. But you don't understand. Once you're under Psychologically, the, yes, like, traumatized. That's the you, thing. If you see someone else bash your good friend's head in, yeah. you're not going to be like, Oh, hey. That hey. is what they're doing <laughs> I'm to take us a as the viewer right yeah. now. Right. They're essentially shoving all yeah. this stuff in our face. So we fear him and we buy this. And you know exactly. what? I buy it right now. Yeah. I'm terrified and I'm constantly concerned that he could do anything at any moment and kill someone. Tyrants rule hundreds of thousands of people. There's no security force that can protect them from hundreds yeah. of thousands of people. But it's, the, people. Fear. it's, but the, it's fear. the fear. Right, exactly. And that's what's happening here. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us this week. Let's go around the table and tell everybody where they can find you. Dennis? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero, on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And also you can find me on Movie Talk on Fridays and Mailbags on Saturdays. And uh, Miss Perry Nimmero. I'm going to go find me an egg sandwich. And then after that, you can catch me <laughs> tweeting and Instagramming at P. Nemiroff, And then on Collider Nightmares every Tuesday, best of the week every Saturday. Well, I will bring you mustard for that sandwich, oh, Perry. Yeah, yeah. You're so generous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that thing in his case, it was like it was like gold him. Uh, guys, you can always find me at the Roca says there on Twitter and on Instagram. See all the shows I'm hosting and co-hosting, including the Cinephiles on iTunes and uh, Super Animation Game Time on Geek and Sundry every Wednesday at 1 p.m. We've had some great shows recently, so look forward to seeing you guys. And always, every once in a while on Fridays on Movie Talk when I get to come on okay. and guest, which is always a blast. Uh, so thanks again for uh, watching this week. Please leave us comments, tweet us what your thoughts are. We'd love to respond back to you and we will see you all next week on the collider walking dead review show hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at collider